This is Pokemon Dusk Remastered. As part of Spooktober, I recently played a Pokemon horror game over on my live streams, and it wasn't like anything I expected. As most of my regulars know, when it comes to Pokemon, I'm usually a master shiny hunter. So a fan-made game is something that I'm relatively new to. Even after playing since Pokemon first launched way back when dinosaurs roamed the earth and no one had ever even conceived of the idea of an iPad kid, I rarely deviated from the main series. So here's a quick breakdown of the premise. We play as Ethan, and we are traveling with our Pokemon Quilava, aka Brando. And we are about to arrive in Goldenrod City to find it and the entire region have been overrun by zombies. This virus attacks both people and Pokemon alike. Our mission? Survive and escape the city. So back to the story. We meet a gun-toting leader of the remaining survivors, and we quickly learn that this game can get violent, so trigger warning for you squeamish weedles out there. There's some blood. In this story, we're tasked with survival. We're given a series of quests by the various survivors in a bunker below Goldenrod City. Each of them have their own horrific experiences with the outbreak, and each of them requires something that they have left behind. We have to use Quilava to fight our way through zombified people and Pokemon in order to complete these tasks. There's just a few things to be aware of. One, these infected have larger than expected attack ranges. And two, there are a limited number of heals available. Nurse Joy only has five heals she can use. And berries and potions are rare. Extremely rare. Like, I cannot emphasize that enough. They are rare. After making our way through the first couple of tasks, we are rewarded with a move upgrade. Flamethrower! Flamethrower allows us to attack from a greater distance and knock enemies back a few tiles. We make our way through iconic locations like Goldenrod Radio Tower, where we encounter a solo rocket who literally tries to strangle us to death. Then we have to go through the floors fighting off zombified Pokemon and people. We reach our goal, turn the phones back on, and head back to the safe house. Now, if you're anything like my chats, you're probably wondering about the rest of the region and the Pokemon world. Well, with the phones back on, we can finally call someone and find out. We contact Professor Elm, and it turns out the zombie infection has spread. How far? We're not exactly sure. In true Hollywood trope fashion, our phone call ends with the Professor trying to share vital information when he is ultimately attacked by one of his assistants. Now it's time to take on the first boss, an alpha Pokemon, Venusaur. This zombified frog boy comes at us with a variety of attacks, but to be honest, this thing was a walk in the park. Next, we meet up with Klaus in the bunker, a police officer who had to escape the game corner overrun with zombies. The gentleman, Albert, asks us to grab a radio attachment, who, he by the way, has a Vulpix with zero ability to fight. This is a showcase only Vulpix. Maybe it's time to start its training. We're in the middle of apocalypse. We kinda need all the fire Pokemon we can get. The next quest comes from the old lady, who has us go back to the daycare center she ran to pick up an egg that could potentially hold a Pokemon. Will it be a useful Pokemon we can fly off into the sunset on? I don't know, but like I said, I could really use the help. So we ran to the daycare, grabbed the egg, and saw the corpse of the daycare lady's husband floating in the pond, and then ran back to the shelter. And now we just have to wait for it to hatch. One day, right? Soon? Please? Next came our biggest challenge yet, the train station. Our task was to go here and meet up with Harold, a Mr. Fix-It kind of man who would help us get the train up and running. But oh, ho, 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 it's not going to be that easy. We made our way through the underground, fighting some zombies along the way to get to the power box. Turns out, we were sabotaged by none other than gym leader Whitney. And if you thought this girl was a pain in the ass in the original games... In this game, she kicks extra ass. This battle with Miltank was brutal, and I mean brutal. It had no discernible pattern. It could stall me, hit me from an unreasonable range, and its rollout attack would speed up just at the end of it enough to clip me every single time. This boss took me forever, but once we defeated her, we headed back to the bunker to deal with another problem. Harold had been bitten while we were down below, which presented us with a moral choice. Let him leave, or kill him. A piece of dialogue earlier in the game said that sometimes people and Pokemon have memories of their former self in their zombie form, which is why some Pokemon retain moves. So I decided to spare him in hopes that I would be rewarded. Since the train was a dead idea, 
No pun intended. We were tasked with following the tracks that led out of the city to see how bad it was. The forest was overrun with people and zombie Pokemon, and all of this led up to a suspiciously green boulder and a cliff that meant certain death. So naturally that means a boss battle. Time to take on this alpha zombie golem. With our, what's that? Oh yeah, one HP Quilava. This becomes a pattern. That means that any hit I got, I had to instantly restart. Next, we were tasked with raiding the department store for supplies, which means we're taking on floors and floors of zombies, all with one HP. First thing we had to do was run down to the basement and flip on the power. Oh, oh no, oh no, oh no, 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 no. Bad idea, run, 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 run. The task was simple, or so I thought. Grab the supplies and run. But just one problem, health which meant it was time for a strategy. With chat cheering me on, we killed each zombie one by one until we had finally claimed each of the supplies. Too bad none of the supplies had heals. I'm not joking, literally no heals in all of the department store. Speaking of heals, a new survivor joined us and tasked us with fetching his meds from the Pokemon Center. And if you thought that there would be a way to use the healing machine in the Pokemon Center, well, you'd be wrong. Dead wrong. Sorry. It took a few tries, but we killed the infected, found the pills, found a potion. Oh my god, thank you, Arceus. Back to the bunker, and as a reward for fetching his meds, Mr. Forehead gave us the new TM. This time for Slash. An attack that replaced my scratch attack and would also knock enemies back. If you got the timing right. Alright, now what? Dave... Are you serious? I have to go to your house and get your sh- Can't you do this yourself? No. The answer is no. Because it's always no. That should be it. It's a photo. This is also where my decision with Harold from earlier would come back to bite me. Literally. Nice health, by the way. We encountered Whitney again, and she informed us that she wasn't a bad guy or whatever said a bunch of cryptic useless stuff, and then she dipped. I really hate her. Oh, it's hatching! Pause champ. A Charmander. Charizard can fly! I can't wait to use this! Oh. Oh, okay. You, you know what? You, you, you just hold on to it, I guess. Great. Awesome. I mean, I'm the one that risked my life for it. Shouldn't it be mine? Time for the third boss. An alpha mega holy crap that thing looks hella infected. Zombie Kingdra. This challenge sucked. <laughs> Not only did I have to dodge attacks, but different stages of its health means that minions would show up and cheat. They cheated a lot. They had insane range. They were like squirrels. It, w it was a struggle. Even after hours, it was a challenge. Mostly because of the 1 HP thing, but after sleeping on it, I realized that the patterns for these minions would repeat. Not in how they would approach or the path that they would follow, but rather from which side they would attack at the last second. Since Kulava can't change direction without moving two tiles, I had to wait for the pattern to have both zombie people and the zombie Pikachu attack from the right side. Then I had to get the right timing and bam, easy clap. I thought I'd make my way back to the bunker to a warm welcome of cheers, but that's not what we got. We arrived to find Dave unconscious and bleeding from his head. This is when Whitney's warning came back into play. Whitney knew that the others would betray us, so she brought a boat key that everyone fought over. Dave wanted to wait for us, but they split, knocking him out in the process. Whitney returns to provide necessary exposition. To summarize, Team Rocket discovered an ancient artifact below the gym deep in ancient zombie-filled catacombs. Turns out this artifact had the power to make zombies. Team Rocket attached it to the radio tower and bada bing, bada boom, whole region is infected. The only way to stop it was to head down to the catacombs and summon the artifact's protector. But first, Whitney unlocked a special building in Goldenrod that contained an antidote, a berry, and a potion. Oh my god, another potion. See, you might think that this is where I heal, but as I told my chat, many, 
many times. If I use the potion now and take damage before I reach the final boss, then the potion is wasted. I needed to save my items until I was just before the boss so that I ensure maximum value out of these scarce resources. It drove chat insane, which was absolutely hilarious. But we fought our way through the catacombs until we found... Thanpy. You laugh, but this thing had rollout, and I was having Miltank PTSD. It took a bit, but little by little we chipped away at its HP until we were able to continue on. Finally, we reached the end. Whitney joined us and told us that the final boss was beyond this door. Now, I had a suspicion she was going to do something, so before I progressed, I saved a few times across different save files. One while using the healing items, and one without using the healing items. And then, well, watch for yourselves. Take this. <clears throat> okay, and I have all of my stuff. Well, that's fun. <sighs> I hate Whitney. <laughs> With a quick reload and bam, she healed us and I kept my items. We entered the final room and summoned the ancient protector, Q9. I think this sprite was taken directly from Pokemon Fusion. We had reached the final boss and our only chance at ridding the world of this infection. Q9 had two attacks, Ember and Extreme Speed, but thanks to that heal I was able to make quick work of him and his minions. The ending was not as I expected. It well, if you don't want to know you might want to stop watching now. It was all a dream? Boo! Oh, Celebi Rewound Time. Huh, but that raises an interesting question. Two timelines? All right, if you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like. You know how to subscribe, do all the things. Let me know in the comment section if you've played this before and if you enjoyed it. And if you want to play it, I'll link it directly in the comments for you. So, until the next time, see ya.